As noted in the first video, the process for analyzing the firm involves assessing the firm's resources and capabilities. In this second video, we will define resources and capabilities and highlight certain attributes that are important to understanding their potential to yield competitive advantage. As this graphic shows, internal analysis involves resources, capabilities, and ultimately core competence. We're going to start with resources because they represent the foundation of this pyramid. Resources are the assets used as inputs into the production process. They are the building blocks upon which capabilities and core competence are created, ultimately yielding the potential for sustainable competitive advantage. Further definition of resources is uh, that they are productive assets owned by the firm. They are tangible and intangible assets that are used in the production process. That's important because many students want to discuss a firm's products or services as its resources. That is not the case. The resources are the underlying blo building blocks that are used to create those products and services. Understanding that is important because these resources often serve as the foundation for the creation of competitive advantage because products and services may change over time as those resources can be put to different uses. It's also important to note that individual resources on their own do not confer a competitive advantage. Rather, it is their combination. There are several different types of resources that are worth noting because they have implications for competitive advantage. First, we have tangible resources. These involve physical, resor uh, physical resources such as plant and equipment, uh, factories, etc. They also involve financial resources such as cash and cash on hand or investments, etc. that the firm can use to make investments. Then we have intangible resources such as technology, the brand or reputation, and the firm's culture. And these are things that are not physically able to touch, but they do exist. And then there are human resources which involve the skills and knowledge of its employees, their motivation, and their collaboration of working together. What's important to note here is tangible resources can be traded on the open market and are often more mobile. A market value exists for them. In contrast, intangible and human resources tend to be less mobile and they also tend to be unable to be valued. And so that stickiness and that, that ability, inability to value them makes them less likely to be traded on the market and more likely to ultimately contribute more towards the creation of a superior competitive advantage. Moving on to capabilities, which rest on resources, we can now see that capabilities are skills, routines, or processes that deploy resources and or combine them towards productive ends. It is, represents what the firm can do in terms of its capacity to deploy those resources towards effective productive use and involves combining resources. Here we can see one of the more common ways to think of the, these capabilities of resource deployment. On the bottom of, the, of Porter's value chain, we see have primary activities. These activities are specific to the creation of product or service, means they're specifically tied to its production. So inbound logistics in terms of getting raw materials and inputs to the appropriate places to, for the manufacturing of, or of the product or service. The operation involves the actual production of that good or service. Outbound logistics refers to getting finished goods and, and uh, final products to the right place, whether that be a warehouse or whether that be a retail facility or distributor. Marketing and sales represents the activities of the firm to promote its brand and sell its product, again, whether that's to directly to consumers or whether that's to consumers or distributors. And then lastly, we have post-sale service, which represents service after the sale of the good. Uh, for example, if there are warranty returns or problems with the product. It's important to note that these primary activities may look different depending on whether we're talking about a firm that manufactures a product versus a firm that produces a service, such as a restaurant. The support activities, on the other hand, are activities that take place behind the scenes that enable the primary activities. Procurement here involves the acquisition of the raw materials in terms of negotiating contracts with suppliers, etc. Technology development, also referred to as R&D, refers to the innovation and development of products and services uh, and the underlying technology behind it to create new goods and services that consumers may want. Human resource management involves the hiring, training, 
retaining and possibly even eliminating uh, human positions based on the, the need of the business and identifying the right people for the right jobs. And then lastly, firm infrastructure is kind of a general uh, catch-all area for aspects of the firm, such as its policies, its procedures, its organizational structure that are involved in the combination of resources and allowing the primary activities to happen. The goal of a Porter's value chain analysis to un is to look at each one of these activities relative to the firm's rivals and understand where the firm has a relative strength and also identifying the underlying resources that are involved in that activity to ensure the firm protects those resources and ensures an adequate supply. Again, the goal here is identifying these capabilities and resources that ultimately could lead to sustainable competitive advantage. Of the past few slides defining resources and capabilities, I have assumed that you will start by looking at the building block. So starting with individual resources and then looking at the value chain to understand the firm's relative strengths. That's the left side of this figure, one process for identifying the firm's key resources and capabilities. There is a second process that some folks use that really looks from the outside and think about, we first start with a customer and say, what are the key factors that customers use in making a decision to buy our product or service. And then they look at it and say, what resources and capabilities are needed to deliver those products and services so that we can outperform the competition. Whether we start from the building blocks up, which is what we presented earlier, or whether we start from the outside, we still end up at the same point. We need to understand the key resources and capabilities that the firms have that will allow us the potential to yield sustainable competitive advantage over our rivals, giving, the, giving our customers something unique about our products and services that attract them and ultimately create profitability for the firm.